everyone. Welcome back to Anyone Can Learn to Code. Okay, let's build a simple Ruby program. It may not be the paradigm of usefulness, but it will bring out an important point. We'll call it the likable program. This program will want feedback from the user as to whether the user likes the program or not. So let's start with Welcome to the likable program. Please, do tell, do you like me? So that will be the initial welcome message. Let's just save this. Okay, and now we're going to ask the user to submit a response. So if you'll recall from last episode, gets is the command that gets the user's input, and then we'll store it in the variable called answer. So after we get the user's input, we'll right now assume that the user will say, yes, I like you, and we'll say, awesome, that's great to hear. Okay, let us run this program. So here it says, welcome to the likable program. Please tell me if you like me. And we'll say yes. Awesome, that's great to hear. So the problem with this program, as you may already be thinking, is that what happens if we run it and we say, when it asks me, do you like me, we'll say no. Awesome, that's great to hear, obviously doesn't make sense. So what we really want is for the program to respond differently based on what the user types in. If the user says yes, then the program could say awesome, but if the user says no, it should say something along the lines of, really, I don't believe you. Now before we proceed, I just want to modify the get statement in our program. I would like to add to the end of it, dot chomp. And this is just a technicality, but most of the time that you use gets, you actually want to use gets.chomp. Without the chomp at the end, when a user enters a word and hits enter, the gets actually stores both the word as well as the new line created by hitting enter. But usually we just care about the word itself and not the extra line from hitting enter, so chomp is a method available to strings that just knocks off that extra new line. We're not focusing on this at the moment, so if it's not clear what I'm talking about, just move on and don't worry about it. So, back to our problem. How do we get the program to respond with alternate responses based on user input? One way to do this is by using what's known as an if statement. The word if in Ruby works pretty much like the word if in English. In English, we'd explain that we want the program to do as follows. If the user types in yes, then the program should say, awesome, that's great. But if the user types no, then the program should get upset. Here's how we would implement this in Ruby. We would say, if answer is yes, then we can use this statement here of awesome, that's great to hear. Else if answer equals no, then we can have an alternative response. So I'd say it's pretty intuitive what this code is doing, but let's break it down. We first store what the user types in in this answer variable. Now in the previous episodes, you'll know that we used variable names like x and y, but really it's best to give variable names descriptive names. So here we're saying answer is the name of the variable because it represents the answer that the user typed in. Now let's go to this line. If answer is yes. Now you're probably wondering if the two equal symbols over here, this double equals, is a typo. It is not a typo. Now here's a very important piece of Ruby knowledge. In Ruby, a single equal sign is used to set a variable, like we do over here and answer equals get.chomp. We take the user's input and store it inside this variable. But when we want to check whether two things are equal to each other, we use a double equal sign. 
So here, we're not setting any variable, but we're trying to see whether two things are equal. That is, we're trying to see whether the user's answer is equal to the word yes. That's why we're using the double equals here. So let's proceed. If the user's answer is equal to yes, then we execute this line of puts awesome, that's great to hear. Next, we encounter another keyword called elsif. Even though it's written in this awkward two words smashed together type of way, understand it as if it was two distinct words, as if it said else if. The proper Ruby syntax is to say it this way, but it's as if it says the two words else if. And understand this to mean that otherwise or else if the answer is no, then puts liar to the screen. Let's run this program and see if it works. Do you like me? So if we say yes, it says awesome, that's great to hear. Let's run it again. And we say no. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. And it says liars. So we actually use this if statement successfully. Let's go back to the code for one moment. And you'll see that on line 8, we say the word end. What this means is that whatever code there is between the if and end depends on what the user's typed in. But end says enough, this is the end of the conditional statements. This is the end of the if statement. Any code that comes after this word end will happen no matter what, unconditionally, not dependent on the user input. And to demonstrate that, let us type a final line that says, thanks for using this program. And let's go back to the program again. I'll run it. Whether you say yes or whether you say no, both times the program ends with this goodbye message of thanks for using this program. And that's because anything that comes after the end will happen. It's beyond the if statement. It does not depend on the user's input. Okay, so now we've got a fully functioning program here. But what would happen if someone typed in something other than yes or no? Let's try that. Do you like me? Not sure. So it just says, thanks for using this program, but wouldn't it be nice for it to say, hey, I don't understand what you're saying. You have two choices. You can say yes or no. I don't understand anything else. Unfortunately, there is no way to do that in Ruby. Just kidding. There is a way. It's using a plain else statement. Let me demonstrate. Else. So this line says, else, meaning if neither of the above conditions were met, meaning the user did not type in yes and the user did not type in no, then else, this catch-all statement, will say, puts, put this message to the screen which says, you have to say yes or no. Let us run the program now. Do you like me? Ooga booga. Sorry, next time, just choose yes or no. And that worked. So if statements allow us to do different things based on different conditions, whether that be different user input or any other set of conditions. And that's why if statements are often referred to as conditionals, meaning certain lines of code run based on certain conditions, while other lines of code may run based on other conditions. I encourage you to practice using conditional statements by creating your own example programs that use them. Thanks so much for watching. Anyone can learn to code.